Everyone, my name is Dr. Nathan Bryan, an international expert in nitric oxide biochemistry and physiology. I spent more than 25 years in the basic sciences, having a bachelor's of science degree in biochemistry, PhD from LSU School of Medicine in molecular and cellular physiology. Published over 100 peer-reviewed papers in the scientific literature, translated basic science into clinical medicine. You may have seen the news release of monosodium glutamate, or MSG, leading to obesity, in fact, being one of the obesity-causing, most fattening food additives out there. Now, these studies are done in isolation. There are a lot of co confounders, there are a lot of comorbidities that go along with it. But I think the science is clear. Glutamate is an amino acid. It's an excitatory amino acid. Glutamate toxicity, glutamate's produced in our neurons. Too much glutamate exposure or toxicity can lead to a number of neurological issues. The other thing is it's a salt. It's a salt that's added to food as a preservative. In fact, many countries around the world have eliminated or prohibited MSG to be used in that country's food supply. But again, the U.S. is kind of late to the party. It's been in a food supply for many, many years, in fact, decades. Is it contributing to the health pandemic that we as Americans suffer from ADHD, neurological disease, obesity, being overweight? I think if you put this in the proper context, people who eat primarily processed foods, of which only which MSG is added, it's a processing agent to preserve the integrity, the shelf life of it, and to add flavor. Do those people also eat more carbohydrates, have less physical activity that contribute to the morbidity and the, comor the, the obesity and the other comorbidities that we see in people who practice certain diet and lifestyle? I think there's a lot to be answered here. There's still probably more unanswered questions than we have answers to. But I think this report is valid. MSG or any of these preservatives that are used or people who eat preserved foods, who eat a predominance of carbohydrates, unhealthy fats with a very limited protein intake, that's really the etiology and the cause of their obesity and their metabolic syndrome. So again, I think we have to come back to a common sense approach. I think the FDA is making a turn, you know, looking at eliminating these harmful dyes that we've just recently seen, a strong consideration for prohibiting them in our food supply. MSG is probably on that list too. I think we have to look at the preponderance of data and see what benefit does this provide to Americans and then what risk does it provide? And I think when you're looking at any decision, whether it's a health decision, any decision you make in life, what's the benefit it provides and at what risk. And if there's really no benefit and it's all risk, it's a very easy decision. Let's eliminate it for the sake and the health of Americans' health and, and well-being. We have a public health crisis. We have a national security crisis. Nine out of 10 Americans are metabolically unhealthy. Most service age, military age men are unfit to serve in our military. This is a national security crisis. So let's start interrogating these things that are in our food supply. Address the missing nutrients, the nutrient density of the food, eliminate from the food these processing agents that are contributing, perhaps contributing to obesity, metabolic disease, and let's take a common sense approach to health and wellness.